Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our daily card reading for March 17th, 2020. Today is St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patty's Day. No green. <laughs> we didn't get a green. I guess we got our gift of green yesterday. I also wanted to say too, like I'm trying a little different setup here and I'm talking with my hands and every once in a while, I like kind of go, you'll be hearing that like in the past. <laughs> so if you were hearing that, that's me just like clapping my hands for emphasis. You can't see me do it. It's weird. I understand. But I cannot control myself. Okay. I don't know. I'm talking with my hands. <laughs> right? So let's get into it here, guys. We have Shadokite Teacher. We are being taught a huge lesson. This actually, if you haven't watched the previous days, you know, I would say four or five days ago, start there and start watching up until now because that's what this card is talking about. Look at this crystal on here. This looks like the earth, kind of, right? It looks like a globe. We are learning what it is to be human and what can go wrong being human. What can go wrong in our consciousness experiment? And maybe some of you don't agree with that. I personally feel like we are in maybe not, I mean, I don't know if it's a holographic universe, maybe, but I think we're definitely in some sort of experiment that we all agreed to and said, I'll go into there and see what happens. I know what the potential consequences could be, but I'm curious about human energy and I want to embody it. And we've all been taught, haven't we? My, 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 <laughs> my, my, my. Um, we're learning, we're learning how fragile humanity is physically, mentally, emotionally, not spiritually, though. It doesn't have to be, at least. We're learning that we're not invincible. We're learning that we can't avoid change. That every once in a while, our day-to-day -day is going to have to adjust to what's happening out there. We're learning that people are not running on love. They're running on fear. And if you're an empath watching this, you know we still have more work to do. And still, we as empaths, we are also living a human existence. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired. I am so tired. And I have, my, my little vacation is taking hot baths and doing my workouts and going hiking and, you know, connecting with all of you. But I don't know, I'll be honest with you, I'm observing, right? And I don't know what to make of this. Now, the angels will come in and they will say, of course, you know, this is teaching you, this is giving you um, sort of a check-in point to see where your consciousness level is. And it doesn't matter if we've done the work. And we're all a work in progress, obviously. Doesn't matter. We still have sisters and brothers out there who have been left behind. And we could easily, in our ego consciousness, go, well, they haven't done the work. But feel how the rest of your body feels. You know that that's not the response. You know it's not. There's something that's going on here where people are getting too invested and being human and forgetting their soul self. And they're treating it as if it never existed. And then they don't go and access it again, unless they're maybe in their final moments and then they panic. We're being taught that we have to do this together. And that might mean be nice to somebody you don't wanna be nice to. I was telling a story a few days ago of the guy who uh, just came back from a lovely hike, gorgeous day. And this guy behind me had to lay on his horn to get me, I guess, to pull into traffic. I don't know what he expected me to do. But as annoyed as I was by that, literally like quizzical face. And then like kind of looking at him like, what is your problem? What is your problem? You know, I, I still had to, it took a minute, <laughs> but I had to flow some love his way. And it was genuine. 
And then I had a moment of kind of like, I don't want to give him love, blah, blah, blah. But sometimes that can make all the difference. Not, you know, not everyone's going to be willing to accept it. I want to give another example here. Um, I was in a grocery store one time and there was a, a dad with his little one. This kid was so cute, like probably a year old, like out of control, melt your heart, cute. Okay. And the dad looked pretty young and kind of overwhelmed. And he looked like, I don't know, like maybe he, uh, not that he would be involved in like, uh, like a bad crowd or anything like that, but he looked like he was kind of like not mainstream. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Like he's not a mainstream kind of guy. And he's, he was kind of, you know, just kind of like going through the motions, getting his groceries. And I was coming in, he was taking his groceries out of the cart and his little boy looked at me with the biggest, bluest eyes you've ever seen in your life and smiled at me. And I kind of lost. I was like, hi, honey, you know, <laughs> doing that whole thing. And this dad who looked like a kind of like a tough guy, you know what I mean? He looked like a tough guy. He started to melt a little bit too. He didn't say anything to me. He just looked at his son like, yeah, my kid is pretty cute, huh? Yeah, pay attention to that. Your child is joy, <laughs> right? Look at your child. And, um, you know, we kind of stood there for a second. He actually, he, I, I was almost waiting for him to let me hold his kid because the kid started to reach out to me. And I was like, okay, that feels like stranger danger. I mean, I know I'm not stranger danger, but don't teach the kid that, my goodness. Um, <laughs> but he didn't, he didn't. He held on to his son. And he just stood there for a minute while I kind of <laughs> had my, you know, lady over 40 who never had kids kind of moment. And uh, by the time he walked out, he had a gigantic smile on his face looking at his son. Now, this is the kind of guy who walks around with a little bit of a scowl on his face. It seems like he, like, that's what I, I like that type. I know I'm like stereotyping him. Please forgive me. But um, he seemed to me like he would be that type. And then he softened and kind of walked out like a proud papa. It would have been very easy to kind of give him a dirty look right back. You know what I mean? We're not all going to have days where we feel strong enough to do that. And that's okay. You guys, you know, we all know that we're all human, right? You know, you're human and you're going to have days where you're just not in the mood. Get out of my way. Okay. <laughs> right. We're going to have those moments, but if you can, if you can try, you know, without being that person. Because remember, when empaths are showing too much sensitivity, the people who don't, who aren't open to that, they find that suspect. They think you want something. They don't think you're trustworthy. And so they won't take, they won't take the kindness. Why are you being so friendly? You smile too much. I don't know about you, kind of thing. We're being taught where we're at. We're being taught how much we can give, how much we should reserve for ourselves. And hopefully we'll get some guidance on how to move forward here. But with everything that comes up today, see it as a great lesson, especially if you start contemplating where the state of the world is. And that's not so that you go, oh my gosh, it's hopeless. It's so that you can evaluate and assess and say, okay, got to make different choices. So we're going to leave it there, guys. I'm sending you so much love and take care. Bye-bye.